One in five suffer. Erases the stigma. Brain difference is not a crime. Mental health isn't just your problem. It's our problem. And now, Mental Health Mondays with Marla and Dave. Welcome, Welcome to, to Mental, Mental Health, Health Mondays, Mondays with Marla and Dave. What, why are we talking about ourselves like we're not us? Yeah, with me, that was kind of cute though. It was coordinated. With me, mm. I'm Marla. It's me. I'm here. <laughs> yes, and of course and him, I'm Dave. He's Dave. <laughs> oh man, and today's show I want to let everybody know is brought to you uh, by Nami San Fernando and Love and Beyond Reason. Also, want to remind you uh, about our uh, a dollar today. Uh, keeps the stigma away. So text the word GIVE, G-I-V-E, to 818-698-1021 to pledge your support. You are about to say something, Yeah, Mom. I was just going to say, with your help, we can get to our goal at the end of February, which is 10,000, 10, 10K. We can do it. Absolutely. A dollar I'm at sure. a time. Of course we can do it. Of course. Of All course right. we can do it. So let's talk about this, today's show. <laughs> well, even before we talk about today's show, I want to remind you that next week we have Carolyn Griffey. As a guest on the show, of course, she used to, she's a former member of Shalimar and daughter of uh, Dick Gregory. Hmm. Uh, that's going to be a very interesting conversation. Today's conversation, we are honored to have in studio uh, the great Stan Zimmerman. He's an award-winning television producer, director, and screenwriter. Uh, one of his latest works is a play called Suicide Notes uh, in Their Own Words. And when we come back, it's our honor to speak and have a conversation with uh, Stan Zimmerman. Help someone who is struggling by supporting the National Alliance on Mental Illness and be a part of the NAMI effect. Hope starts with you. As Dave promised, um, we are welcoming Stan welcome Zimmerman. You. And we, again, we are honored. Look at yeah, that. Look at there. Studio audience. Look, look at, at that. there. Look what we did. Look, look what at happened. their standing ovation. Sit down, sit down, sit down. <laughs> thank you for thank you for uh, stopping by and having a conversation with us. Uh, thank you for inviting me. And so I think you were telling me that I get that uh, name title wrong. Title yes. wrong. So yeah. The very first time we did the play, which was at the 2015 Hollywood Fringe Festival, yeah. it was called Suicide Notes in their own words. And then when a Broadway producer got involved, she asked me to change the title. She was afraid that actually the word suicide was not going to be commercially viable. People would not want to come to that play. Wow. And I kind of fought her on that. And, I'm like, oh. and then I met dinner with a friend, and we came up with this title right before I go, but R-I-G-H-T. But when you heard it, it could sound like right, like oh, W. Wow. And I was like, okay, that's clever. We'll Double use entendre. it. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. <laughs> so, and there it is. And it's actually my first published play after all these years of being in the trenches of television and film yeah. out yeah. in Hollywood. But to actually have a play, and I'm a theater baby. I started when I was seven in Detroit. Wow. Wow. And so I was just back in New York in November, and I got to go to the drama bookshop, and there was my play with my name on it. I just I couldn't wow. believe it. So I'm really thrilled. But even more so because now there's a company that will license a play and get it out all over the world. Right. And it's so important I love that. that this play can get out in the world and save lives and awareness. And the play actually uses real suicide notes from Kurt Cobain, war veterans, LGBTQ wow. members, uh, kids that were bullied, uh, politicians, but also uh, other people, just people that we right, don't know right. about. And originally it was uh, designed like the vagina monologue so it could be produced you know, with like mm -hmm. one day rehearsal, all right. actors reading it, no memorization, right. on stools, um, with music stands. And then my director, Michael Wilson, said, you really should tell uh, the story of your friend, which was the impetus for me. I was going to ask mm. you, speaking of in your own words, can you tell us exactly what inspired you to yes. actually? So 10 years ago, my very close friend, Kevin Gill, died by suicide. Mm. And he left a note. And I was mentioned in the note, one of his four friends. And um, I just felt helpless as a comedy writer. What could I do uh, to combat this? I didn't yeah. understand uh, how he did it, why he did it. I was hoping that if I could get the note, it would explain why. It, and so it that was not, the journey. Is that your journey toward closure well, that kind was of thing? The, what the play ended up being is that I ended up, Michael Wilson said, when you talk, because you're a comedy writer, you're going to be funny, you're going to bring humanity yeah. to it. Because yeah. I said, I don't want humanity or humor. Yeah. I want to just hit people in the Make gut. It and yeah. it did the first time we did it. It was just like people would kind of stumble out of the theater. Mm. 
But then I see adding <laughs> my humor, and I have found this all through my career, is when you have humor, people are just seem more open yeah. to taking in the mm -hmm. ideas. And I like that it's that journey. You can kind of get a little bit, I, I would say that it helps to get past the discomfort, the personal discomfort of any topic. So it, what you... Yeah, so through yes, me, and like, because yes. I don't know. So I really approached it the first time I did drafts of it, I was using verbiage that, that people in the mental health field said, don't, you can't say, yeah. commit suicide. You died by suicide because they didn't want to seem like a crime that you committed. So I had to huh. do that. They asked me to sometimes take out the way people did it because that could be triggering, which I did for most mm. of the letters yeah. and notes. I said, uh, like for Virginia Woolf, it was so poetic. She actually put rocks in her Pop pocket because, yeah. and walked in. I said, I, ha I have to keep that in right. yeah. uh, as an artist. Of course. Um, but I feel like now with, with you know, Google and computers, right. kids can find of out course. anywhere. So th I think things have changed. Um, so then the first time we were doing it in Orlando, maybe seven years ago or six years ago, I said, just cast someone old and funny. And they, for me, the narrator character, which was not going to be me. And that actor got a job at the last minute. And the director was like, it's you. You're up. <laughs> You're doing it tonight. Wow. So we sat at a table, and my friend Mindy Sterling from Austin Powers, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. fantastic lady, <laughs> she was doing the play, and then we went to do just a table read of it, and I got to my friend's name. You couldn't get, I couldn't say it. Oh my goodness. I felt if I said his name, it's going to be Niagara Falls. Right, yeah. And Mindy just held you, supported held you through it. And of course, the glasses did fill up with, yeah. with tears, and they've been filling up every time I do it. I just did the play in my hometown. Which is? Detroit. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Cast Tech High School. And the wonderful Hill Harper uh, from The Good Doctor uh -huh. uh, did the production with me, along with a college student and a high school student. And uh, that's what's so amazing is that I've been able to now do what I did at Claremont High School here okay. with, with students, wow. faculty, and school board members. Wow. And I did it in Bethesda with high school students. And then I did a virtual production during COVID uh, with Hari Neff, Wilson Cruz, Blair Underwood, wow. and Vanessa Williams. <laughs> wow. So there I am. Excuse me, you dropped something over yeah, there. Yeah, a couple of names. <laughs> Whoops. So there I am in my house during COVID, acting in a, in a computer I with Vanessa that. Williams. She's I looking beautiful. That. I'm looking like I'm 508 years old. <laughs> no, and, oh, never. <laughs> and um, But I thank her. She's been involved in two productions of it uh, when we did a big benefit a town hall in New York and then this virtual production and that's what's been so cool about it doing with celebrities but also bringing in young people into it that's why it was so disheartening when two weeks ago was I was supposed to be at a university and it was canceled a few weeks prior because the head of their mental health department wow thought by talking about suicide kids would, would want to do a copycat. it so, and I, we made clear that uh, the play's an hour long. The last half hour we add on to the play is a talk back with the audience, with mm -hmm. a mental health professional from the community. And to me, that's the best part of the play. Well, yeah. that's interesting that you- the Interactive that that uh, situation. I feel like I don't really need to be here today because Stan is actually running around in my mind. Because hey, you're, <laughs> you're going to places that I was just going to say. I would, I would really want to get into the reception that you're getting because of- this topic and just which is my speak all over the place is the conversations that we're that we're not willing to have but they're conversations that will save lives we have to have exactly that. And it, it, it baffles me as to how the mental health uh person at the university how else do you erase the stigma if you can't talk about it they have very backwards thinking that was the thinking like years and years and yeah. years ago but now today it is talking about it they also made a comment that i made too much of the lgbtq plus experience when two only two of the 24 notes are lgbtq now i'm not so, trying to call out the university but was this a christian school or something i'm like not that? allowed to say because the teacher director still is working there till the end oh, of the wow. semester at that point, I will feel... Put them on blast, yes. yeah. Uh, I, I thought, because I knew about this at the end of November, and I thought, I'm just going to be quiet. And I, I can't. I, well, well, yeah. The end of my play yeah, yeah, is yeah. literally yeah, yeah. break the silence. silence. Yeah. So I broke the silence. 
and wow. well, we have a lot more to talk about with <laughs> yeah. Stan, and we're happy. Listen, Stan, 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 and I, you know, we roll with the same mantra because Marla is a break the silence believer. Absolutely, we've got there's more no with, such thing as silence around Marla. So. There, there, we've got more with Stan Zimmerman when we come back. We'll be right back. When Dave and Marla get together. You may not realize it, but these words, often used to describe someone with a mental health condition, can be very harmful. In a country where one in five people are affected by a mental health condition, it's time for all of us to step up and change the conversation. Just because someone's struggle isn't obvious on the outside doesn't mean they aren't hurting on the inside. We need to see the person, not the condition. Join with me, pledge to be stigma free. It's time for the Mental Health Minute with Marla and Dave. What an, is an anxiety disorder? Well, it's a chronic condition characterized by an excessive and persistent sense of apprehension with physical symptoms such as sweating, palpitations, and feelings of stress. People with anxiety disorders respond to certain objects or situations with fear and dread. According to mentalhealth.gov, an anxiety disorder is diagnosed if a person has an inappropriate response to a situation, cannot control the response, or has an altered way of life due to the anxiety. The five major types of anxiety disorders are generalized anxiety disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder or OCD, panic disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD, or social phobia or social anxiety disorder. And as we always remind here on Mental Health Monday, if you or anyone that you know shows signs of anxiety, please contact a mental health professional and get much needed help. This message is brought to you by Mental Health Monday with Marlon Day. David is a thinker. I never do anything without thinking about it first. Marla is a feeler. I basically wear my personality on my sleeve. But when Marla and Dave get together, it's like a match dancing with a firecracker. Marla. Dave. All right, we're back. Stan, so mm -hmm. when you... Firecracker. Yeah, that, yeah, that's me. <laughs> pow, 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 ping, pow, pow. <laughs> um, I will say this. I just have to jump out. Okay. It ceases to amaze me. And I have always felt this way, even when I was young. I don't understand why certain people are disturbed by things that are so personally non-transferable, so to say. So, for example, if you have an if if you have something that if you that bothers you about someone black, you associating with someone black doesn't turn you black. So it's the same. Wait, it doesn't. <laughs> I know, I know. Many people have tried. Shucks. I know. Copper tone didn't do it. Oh, damn. All but hours of watching Soul <laughs> yeah, it's, no, it doesn't work. So, so it's shocking to me that someone would move past the message of help based on a bias that has. The, it, it's. I'm shocked because I just don't understand how you can how you can be someone who's either an educator someone in a mental health field, someone who is committed to helping to ease the suffering of those that you are trying but to help. That's where we are today. You can't talk about racism. They're banning books. They can't talk about it's unimaginable. LGBTQ issues because it's offensive to people and you can't talk about your feelings. So something's going on in the world where there's a segment of the population that doesn't want us to talk about it. And I think all those things, if we don't talk about it now, we're just pushing it down the road. We're going to have to deal with it yeah, and, year and we, after and we year all after know, we are still dealing with it. And we all that. know what happens when you drive the conversation underground. The experiences uh, just become more extreme until we finally have to do what we should have been doing all along with what you're tr exactly what you're trying to do uh, with your play as well. Well, I wanted to use my art because I felt so uh, helpless. Yeah. And this was a way that as a, a comic writer and just right. a writer, yeah. I could take my art. Because sometimes, I don't know about you all, but just I get so frustrated. I'm a real news junkie. And it's like, what can I do to mm. change the dialogue? 
Well, you could write a play. You Turn could do off the, your TV. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> that no, that's just crazy. No way. Create your own news channel. Well, I would love to do that. But it's to get out into the communities. And that's my dream yeah. with this play is to go to different communities. And just by posting it, because I really question, should I talk about it or not? But I right. thought on the weekend when I was supposed to be doing the play is a good time to talk about it. And that has opened up other areas. Right. Somebody from... Alabama contacted me about doing the play down there and wow. some oh, other communities. And I'm, yeah. So that's my dream is to just go into communities and y and work with young actors and this would be like their first opportunity to be in a play and uh, maybe some celebrity names. Right. And especially this week we, we've heard so much about... Again, there you go, running around, taking my wife. Just, <laughs> I'm psychic go. too, okay, so watch go. it. Okay. He's in your mind. I can tell you things I'll about your no. future. Get out of my mind. <laughs> um, there have been so many high profile suicides and the I don't want out. to negate all the suicides we don't right. hear about, right. mm -hmm. but if those deaths that we do can provoke discussions like what names you're of doing. equal matter without note is what I call it. They're names that, that any loss ha matters. Right. It's 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 of equal matter. We just they're not notable names. We just don't know their names. But even you know, to me, I look at where we are and I see it as almost critical mass. Like in other words, it's it's so prevalent now that you know the things that you you never even would you know you heard of before or just in the in the numbers and the volumes and i just am shocked yesterday i was literally on a walk and this ticker comes across a banner and and says that that the young lady and we chesley, chesley yeah. yeah chesley chesley kirst 30 years old, seeming to have everything to live for, and a turn he had But we don't know, and, and I'm sure. And I, that's the issue. That's the point. Yeah. We that, don't know. That is the point. And so my point is, this is where I'm saying that these are where the stigmas are broken. Because those but things. not if you don't talk about it. Exactly. And that's why and everyone is so afraid. You have to ask people, is it okay? And I know it just not being that involved in it. Right. Is it okay to ask someone, how are you feeling? Because I think we all feel if we... What if I say the wrong thing? And I know someone wanted to send flowers to somebody that n was a relative of someone. Mm -hmm. then what do I do? Yeah. There's no, there's there's no, no right, rule yeah, yeah. book. I'm, there's I'm no actually right or wrong. interested in uh, the feedback portion of the show, that half an hour where you're just having those conversations with the audience. Well, in Detroit, there was an amazing one. Uh, 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 this beautiful black mother got up and said, "My, I hate to say this, but my husband died by suicide, mm. and I'm feeling angry. Wow. And I, I'm almost embarrassed of that emotion because what do I tell my son? How, how can I raise my son? And Hill Harper is such a wonderful human being. Mm. He said, you come down after the talk back. I'm going to give him my personal phone number. And if he ever needs a father figure to talk to. Wow. And when that happened, I said, I have to be doing this play every oh, weekend yeah. exactly. for moments like that. The and impact is real. It's Right there happened. Yeah. And I think people opened up so much because in the play I opened so, up right, so right. much about who I am and yeah. my struggles and being spit on, bullied in, mm. in, in junior high and coming home and thinking of ways that I wouldn't have to go back here. to school yeah, the, the next day. So that was so wonderful that we could create that. And unless we're open and talking, well, Thank you those for staying, by the way. Well. Because I'm glad to, to well, be able to theater you. saved my life. Theater literally wow. saved my life, and so I want to use theater to save mm -hmm. other lives. <laughs> wow. That's a, that's ex it's <laughs> not only is it that's profound. It, it's not even it, it is that, but it's also to me. I just feel grateful because I feel like it's confirmation. Because you know I get a lot of scrutiny for speaking out. You know why are you talking about this? You know this is your family. What what are you doing? I I mean I get that even from inside my family. So I have to say thank you. And we're not done um, with with more with Stan Zimmerman. We'll be right back. All right, that no. fun music uh, no. that you, Marla. I know no, you don't. No, not fit. in 2022. You're without gonna a dance. Pole. You're gonna dance in 2022. If you don't uh, get me a poll, there will be no pole dancing All right. up in the studio. Can you uh, can you take a down payment on a pole? <laughs> <laughs> what about this water bottle? Anyway, <laughs> the last time we were here and we had we took a break for quite some time and and uh, 
I appreciate you guys giving me the time to do with the passing of my father and issues that our family was going through. Thank you for your thoughts, your prayers, your support. But the last time we were here, uh, we asked what percentage of U.S. adults suffer from anxiety disorders? Uh, your options were 19 percent. 27% or 34%. Now, Stan, this is where we bring you back. Uh-oh. And you get that. a chance to uh, I I take us. I pole dance here. <laughs> yeah, you were waiting for the pole. Yeah, yeah, I was too. Yeah, Marlo let us Good down. Good thing Stan's anyway. not on Price is Right. That was, did you see him? He, had to, he woke up. It was like, okay, I'm what? I'm in the game? So the question is, what percentage of U.S. adults suffer 34. from? 34. 34 is your, is your guess, huh? That's what I'm well, Inc. Oh, Stan. 19%. Sweetie. Which, you know, the, actually the number <laughs> might be a lot higher because these, this statistic was pre-pandemic. So oh, yes. we like probably the, have like, a lot more. I like the way though Stan, he wouldn't even, when he I just jumped right out like, there. Wait, he, he wouldn't even make direct eye contact with me after <laughs> that. He's like, get out of my face. Like, <laughs> Sweetie, he was like, eh. <laughs> Marla, what's the poll question for next week? Next week, the poll question is, what percentage of mental health disorders show first signs before a young person turns 14 years old? 25%, 50%, or 75%? Shall you I kinda, ask I kind of lost me. It was kind of lost I'm me. I'm keeping my mouth shut on that one. What no, percentage of mental we, health we won't disorders know next week, so I can't stare you show down. first signs before a person turns 14 years old? 25, 50, or 75 percent? Not taking a guess? You got to take a guess. We won't know till next week. 50. We're not going to. All right. Ah, oh, man. Uh, so we, so we'll, we, is Stan going to strike out? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Will Stan be able to redeem himself? <laughs> you won't know until you show up here next week on Mental Health Monday. Let's see if Stan got it right. Remember to text the word GIVE, G-I-V-E, to 818-698-1021 and pledge your support for a dollar today keeps the stigma away. Back to our conversation with Stan. Oh, <laughs> All right, uh, like we promised, we're back that quickly. Yeah. And Stan, you were talking about the impact, uh, the beautiful impact that your uh, work is having, especially as it relates to your the time that you get to spend conversing with the audience directly and some of the help that you get to directly pour into mm -hmm. people that need it. Yeah, and it's interesting. Different communities are very open to it, and then others are not. So Tell yeah. us a little yeah. bit about that. Well, it just made me question why, why, you know, and then you're seeing why in Florida and Texas are they banning books? Why is it down there? And mm -hmm. then other communities are not, you know, and uh, when I did the play in Detroit, I said, I can rewrite some of the notes, have a lot of profanity in it, but that that's the real notes. Yeah. And they said, no, I mean, we want to honor the writers. Right. Um, and, you know, as I started collecting the notes, they were just a lot to take in. Yeah. Uh, but what I was amazed by was the beauty of the writing at such a, a difficult time of their lives. You know, it, it was a clarity and it was um, poetic in a way. Mm. And so I wanted to share that. And one of the letters uh, David Foster Wallace wrote, I put at the beginning of the play um, about the feeling of depression and feeling like you're in a burning building and the only way out is through the window. And it mm. reminded me of the images from 9-11. Mm. And so I thought, because I remember watching that and thinking, why? who would do that? That's an awful choice. Awful choice. Yeah. So I put that at the beginning of the place so people can understand that's the feeling. So with like Chesley, you know, when people say, how could she jump off her building? Because think How of, could she not? Essentially from that like perspective. It, her pain was so much. Yeah. And, and Right, and that and so that's we have to get to that, and that's what I was expressing yesterday on my live. That you know, you don't even you, there's so much you don't take into consideration that even the fact that by the time you are consumed and and with that much pain that is inescapable, it's sometimes it's the brain, it's the only way out for a lot of people because there's there's no valve. We're not talking about it. We're not getting. I mean, in other words, we're not even offering outlets to actually ease. The, they're in pain. That's you pain. are. You're offering the show. I'm offering, offering the my play. play. Right, which is These why we're hand ways, in hand. We, exactly. This is why we just keep talking about it. Yes. And why I changed the end of my play from the Fringe Festival of adding hope at the end. Yeah. I found a number of notes from survivors. And they talked oh. about living for what's around the corner. We don't know what it's going to be. Five months, five days, five minutes. Live for those moments. Yeah. 
and and people leave the theater and they thought, oh, I thought I was going to be depressed. They leave with hope. Uplifted. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. You know, I, an interesting question just popped into my mind. How do you choose which, which notes, notes to have in the play and which to leave out? What is that process That like? was tough because I also wanted to tell kind of the history of notes. Mm -hmm. There yeah. was one I found a Japanese uh, poet wrote on the bark of a tree. He wrote a poem. Wow. He, he felt hurt because the woman he loved didn't love him back. So, uh, and also originally people would... Um, Send them into newspapers. Yes, back, I did not. Back then, I yes. did not know that. Yes. Uh, Wait, send a that. suicide note yes. into the newspaper. Yes. 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 Wow. Uh, then it would be, it you would know, be a publication post their passing. Uh, a trans woman left hers on Facebook, so I found it on Facebook, and then I found everyone's response. All their friends saw she was doing this, so I put that in the play, and the other actors say, "Kate, don't do it." And then I say, "Wow, they read 1202. the other responses." I called the police, 1207. Wow. So we follow the journey mm -hmm. of her friends finding out and seeing what happened with her and wanting her to stop her from doing it. So it, yeah. there's many places over the years how, how the notes uh, come about. And, and you know what I think is, is about to happen, Stan, or is it beginning to happen? You know, it's very easy to not consider something that doesn't affect you, but now we're talking one in three people who are affected by some type of mental health or personality disorder challenge. And so, it, you know, I can tell you that with my outreach, and this is zero exaggeration, I might get a hundred messages, even in a week, sometimes more, of people literally now sharing their stories and I reaching out. Little. I'm sure. But what I'm, I'm I've gotten them people, I, I'm sometimes I'm afraid to open my email because the stories <laughs> I get, but then I've gotten one uh, that you saved about lives. six months ago, yes. yes. A girl I went to high school with brought her son, mm -hmm. and she wrote me about six months ago, and she says, I just want you to know, I think you saved his life yeah. by him coming to the play. But when I did it here the first time, I would say to the audience, raise your hand if you've been touched by suicide. 98% of and people raised their hand. And everyone looked around, but they oh had my no goodness, idea. Exactly. Wow, they, they, they you don't thought talk they were on the journey alone. And then yeah. mid, that just brought the whole, whole room together. Room together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People did not want to leave. And then we said we had to kick them out of the theater. Okay, and let's, wow. go, and then let's they go, went, go as a group. And then they went to the street. And we all talked there yeah. for another half wow. hour. And that's when I knew that I just had to yeah. keep pushing this you do. forward. Yeah. And we have no. to, and you know what? And I have to say this even now. And I'll look at my camera. I, I always used to start Mental Health Monday by saying every conversation that we have is one worth having and one worth hearing. And this is a beautiful moment for me because I don't have any um, delineation between joining hands with anyone who's willing to have a productive Absolutely. conversation. All these conversations matter. And the more we can collect these conversations, the louder our voices of help will get. Awareness brings solutions. And so, it, you know, we got to do this. We really have to do this. We are doing it. And, and we have to continue. I'm just saying. I'm talking to them. Those, those oh, who are yeah. still afraid or, or, you know, you have this trepidation. Use your voice. Join hands. And it's a up. beautiful cycle because the pain that was there is now being recycled into hope for somebody else who might need it because you're not alone. Man, this conversation is amazing. Uh, we can't wait to take this little break and we'll be right back. Bad. What are you doing? You're worthless. Don't, don't trust them. They'll hurt you. You're worthless. It's pointless. When the pain of schizophrenia meets hope, everything can change. Help someone who is struggling by supporting the National Alliance on Mental Illness and be a part of the NAMI effect. Hope starts with you. All right, we are back I'm with these uh, last two Stan minutes over Zimmerman. to Stan. And we didn't know how much, how connected that we were. Uh, I have a friend uh, said went to Cast Tech. Uh, my really? group, my fir uh, former groupmate, yeah. 
<laughs> well, Lily Tomlin, who's a friend of mine, went and she filmed a little intro for the play for me. And nice. Di- Diana Ross went I there. Love that. David yes. Allen Greer. Yes. Yeah, yes. A few. Another name dropping. <laughs> yes, right. yes, you know, yes. Oh, you Not that they're tra- all good friends. A trail of, of bread, bread comes behind you. I, 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 I did have one meeting with Diana Ross, but that's, nice. an, that's a whole thing. Wow. <laughs> wow. And then uh, you're going to be doing the play in Decatur, Alabama. And I I'm was hoping, just there. I'm hoping. So He's yeah. working. That's the next possible. Mm. Yeah. Oh, it's going to happen. Okay. We're speaking into existence. Okay. <laughs> and that's our home. That's exactly. our home. Huntsville, Dave Alabama. Dave and I grew up in Huntsville. We met in Huntsville, Alabama. Miles down the road. Ah, Stan, this has been an amazing conversation. Give us your just final words. Give us a, a touch of that uplifting moment at the end of the show that we can take away. I'm just, you know, I love that you do Mental Health Mondays, but, you know, we need to think about it seven days a week. And mm. what you two are doing is so beautiful. And thank you for giving me a voice. And I hope with this play, you know, the voice can get all over the world and we can just keep getting into those messy conversations. And so no one has to write a note. Right. Absolutely. Well, we can erase the notes with conversation and, and love. So that's, that's, a, that's a good thing for us to do. We are honored. Thank you again for uh, just sharing your perspective. Uh, and I just want to quickly say that that I'm going to stay in touch. And when we f- when Stan's production goes wherever, you'll be able to find that information on our website. Absolutely. Uh, our guest has been Stan Zimmerman. Uh, we can't wait to have him back again. And we want to remind you that next week we have Carolyn Griffey, uh, who's going to be a guest on the show. It's going to be another great conversation. Until next time, we're Marla and Dave. And welcome back, and I'm glad that you're doing well as as well. Well, Thank you, Marla. Thank you. And remember, your overall health includes your mental health. See you next week.